Hey, this is Zephyr Chung with Iris Diecast, and for this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the most expensive model of my collection so far, the Maybaugh 57 with Lowenhart rims by AutoArt. So Maybaughs are highly sought after models here in Korea, but there is an even bigger premium on those with these 22-inch Lowenhart rims, and I, I can kind of see where that's coming from because these rims are primarily the reason that I chose this car over the much cheaper standard Maybach 57 or 62. So when I bought this car, I could have either chosen this, which cost me 140,000 Korean won, which is equivalent to around 130 US dollars, and the green 62, which cost 80,000 Korean won, which is around 75 US dollars. They both came with some defects and didn't have a box, but I just had to pay the 1.8 times higher price because these rims were just impossible to pass. I couldn't pass them up because of the rims. So I normally don't collect expensive model cars because I prefer having more cheaper cars. So basically, quantity over quality. But I've always wanted a Maybell and thought I just get um, this roughly cared one for a relatively cheaper price. So the Maybach. If you're a car fan, it's kind of hard not to know about this car. It's one of the three super luxury car brands, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, and this Maybach. So there's two versions of the Maybach, the 5.7 and the 6.2, named after the length of the car. So this particular model is a Maybell 5.7, the entry model, so it's approximately 5.7 meters long. So being a super luxury car, they used to um, make three of these cars per day with nearly five to six months required to finish a car. Of course, uh, Maybell wasn't very su successful due to its lack of brand power and marketing, uh, limited lineup and lack of development, etc. Um, because Maybell was a lost luxury brand from the 1940s, while the Rolls Royce and Bentley have been selling expensive cars for decades. Um, so there were so many reasons that the Maybell was destined to uh, fail, but nevertheless, to many car fans, this car still remains a great legend and poses a different uh, image from the Maybell trim cars you see on the Modern S-Class. So let's start with the front of the model. This was back when Outdoor was really sweet. Late 2000s, uh, no cost cutting, no cheap composite material, and no ridiculous price. Um, so it may be because I collect um, cheaper cars, but the headlamp details are flawless. There aren't any pegs or anything, and um, the bulbs and the little patterns on them are perfect. And the um, orange turn signal uh, here is my favorite. It kind of glitters from far away. It's really neat. The grills are completely open and it's finished cleanly. It's a very old model, um, but there's no wear to the chrome um, like some of the cheaper diecast cars. The Maybell logo is very uh, thin and weak, yet it's finished very clean cleanly and it's made beautifully, but um, this logo here, it breaks, down, breaks off very easily. And unfortunately, this model was no exception. Uh, it's glued back. Um, so if you're looking forward to buying an outdoor Maybell, uh, be sure to check whether the logo is still there, whether it's crooked or um, glued back. The engine room detail itself is amazing, but if there is one thing that I'm disappointed with, uh, it's the fact that they use uh, hinges uh, for the hood without gas lifts. Um, this is a common thing with older Artois cars, and um, the problem is it gets loose um, after some time and it won't stay up, like this car right here. Um, but the engine room detail itself is great. I was amazed at how these um, Small labels here and uh, here, and the stickers were done um, cleanly and clearly, and it's not in a blur. Um, 
I can definitely feel the auto art quality in this engine. It's definitely different from even um, the nicer, cheaper car engines. So um, the Maybach's got the standard Maybach's got a 500 horsepower, 5.5 liter V12 SOHC twin turbo engine, which this model has, and the S version's got a 612 horsepower, 60, uh, 6.0 liter V12 twin turbo engine which was also used in the W220 S65 AMG. So um, the ones with the uh, the AMG engine, the S versions, apparently they were also very fast in terms of acceleration, um, even though the car uh, is very heavy. So um, I'm not sure if you guys can feel it in the camera, but this model is very, very long, of course, because the real car itself is 5.7 meters long. Um, I guess the 6.2, uh, which is the longer wheelbase version, would be even harder to display. Um, of course, it's auto models. You've got uh, windows and the opening parts gap is small. The chrome here and here, it's finished nicely. Usually cheaper cars have roughly connected chrome lines. And um, I love how they put, oh, I can't get a clear view of it. They put a um, plastic part for the uh, side mirror uh, indicator here instead of just painting it on, um, which was pretty nice. Again, uh, to our quality. Uh, but of course, all of these qualities I've just mentioned are, pro pro are probably the basics for outdoor. I mean, you you ought to get this level of quality if you pay if you're paying such a high price, right? Of course, the highlight of this model, the 22 inch uh, low art rims. The detail on it is great, but um, but the really the rims itself are so beautiful and um. It's what really makes this car special from other um, half a dozen Maybach variants that I could have bought. Um, the car has a very large um, door opening angle for both front and rear doors, which I um, absolutely loved. So you can actually see the interior. So on to the interior. Um, yes, you do have this uh, fuzzy carpet on the floor. The seats are plastic, but there is a um, leather seat dealer version that I'm looking forward to um, also getting. Uh, frankly, to be honest, I think the interior is great, um, but really, I think I was just expecting a little more from it. I mean, the buttons and all of that. Um, it's certainly cleaner and it has more color to it than cheaper die cast cars, but um, I really can't say the interior is worth all that much more than cheaper cars. I've seen some Mesa models that are nearly as good as this. Well, um, I'm guessing that in terms of size, there is a limit to the amount of detail you can put on the dash, uh, or maybe that CLS was exceptional, but yeah. Um, still, it's a very beautiful interior. I love the wood trim. Um, and how they did a wonderful job with the wipers and the blinkers um, next to the steering wheel. The door trim is especially impressive. Uh, they have some chrome parts there and the Maybell logo um, plate down there is it's plastic, it's not just sticker like some cheaper die-cast cars. So the interior, especially the front of the Maybach, is based on the Mercedes-Benz S-Class W220, um, which was highly criticized for, because of its cheap material. Um, I've heard the dash and the air vents were identical. Um, and you know, the W220 has this cheap plastic issue that melts and gets sticky. So I guess, that could be another reason why the Maybach failed. And of course, the rear is where the fun is with super luxury cars like this. But uh, being a 5.7 model, the um, rear seat options are a bit limited. Um, there's no partition, uh, nor curtains. 
and the um the center console doesn't open uh which was uh a bit unfortunate because I think it would have been really cool if the center console opened and we could uh, and there was a little phone inside I think that would have been really cool uh we do have the speed thermometer on the roof uh and so you can see how fast your driver is going and um some mirrors of course i love the small attention <laughs> to detail there and uh, even though it's a shorter 57 the wheelbase and the uh, so basically the leg room is uh enormous and uh, again i wonder how large the uh Maybach 62 would be uh, i heard there is 210 pieces of leather and um 100 pieces of wood trim uh, in, in the Maybell and with all the options there are basically 2 million combinations available so mathematically uh, there is no two identical Maybell which is uh, quite interesting. The roof is pretty simple you have a sunroof up front uh, it would have been cooler if it had this uh, giant panoramic sunroof that stretches to the rear uh, in the actual car that option that option alone is worth thousands of dollars and you can adjust the transparency of the sunroof um, to control the amount of sunlight that goes into your cabin and uh, it's amazing really. So onto the rear, the trunk is really spacious and again you have nice carpets here and I love how they did the little net uh, over there. Um, the trunk lot the trunk line here and the Maybell logo is made out of um, ultra thin chrome and the rear lamps are done really nicely. Uh, there's nothing to really uh, comment there, it's just really nicely made, uh, typical Ottawa quality of course. The uh, rear looks pretty similar to the W221S class but since this one is based on the W140 um, the W221, uh, W21, uh, yeah, 221 probably uh, got, its, got its design cues from the Maybell. Uh, the undercarriage is really well detailed. Um, you even have suspension uh, over there. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's a little bit dark in the video. Yeah, there you go, there's the suspension, although the model itself doesn't have working suspension. And that's pretty much it, my uh, review on the outward Maybell 57 with low inert rims. Um, now, like I said earlier, I don't really collect ex expensive cars, but this one was a really <laughs> satisfying purchase. Um, I think it's worth every buck I spent, which kind of worries me because I may end up now buying some more uh, expensive models and um, like I keep uh, repeatedly saying I don't collect uh, different color variations of the same model but um, for this car I'm looking forward to getting more versions of the Maybell it's just one of those cars that you just have to hoard <laughs> um, it's beautiful and uh, it's a really well crafted model it's um, shows the to our quality back in was back when it was really good so um, if you can find it I definitely recommend it it's a beautiful car uh, albeit rather pricey so anyway thank you guys so much for watching uh, if you've enjoyed the video please click like and subscribe if you didn't give me a thumbs down tell me what I should be what I should be working on uh, and uh, I'll see you guys in a future video then